Okay, so thank you so much for, for giving me an opportunity to explain my work. So today we will talk about multimodal representation and learning. So majority of this work is done at uh, during my PhD at University of Insubria and during my first postdoc at Italian Institute of Technology, Genova. So first I will explain about some of the motivations and challenges facing multimodal. Then I will focus on two uh, modalities, audio and images for multimodal representation. And I will show you three uh, project, three papers or three work that I had done um, involving phase-wise association. Then I will also show one of my work involving multimodal representation and that covers image and text modalities. So deep learning, we all know that deep learning has remarkably improved state of the art on object detection, image recognition, and text processing. Interestingly, majority of these techniques are focused on unimodal. How are real world scenarios present data in a multimodal fashion? For example, we listen, we see object, we listen sound, we feel the um, order. Moreover, recent years have seen an explosion in multimodal data over the internet. Users combine audio visual information to, to share a tweet or maybe sell a product on a standard uh, e-commerce platform. And it is well known that multiple data provide enriched information to capture a particular concept than individual modality. It is therefore important to perform multimodal learning to understand the world, the web and the world around us. So now I'm going to present three real world application scenarios that are typically are very common for multimodal. So let me show you example of in ambiguous textual description that can be disambiguated through the analysis of respective images. So the, the, in the second row, the textual description are semantically similar. So it's very hard to, to categorize those two different textual information. However, if we have respective image information, we can easily categorize this advertisement and these sort of advertisements are very common on a on a um, e-commerce platform similarly examples of ambiguous image that can be disambiguated through the analysis of respective text description so if you see the the two images they are semantically very similar one is scaffolding and the other one is ladder so visually it might not be so easy to categorize them but if you we have a company test description we can easily categorize into correct categories so now let me show you another scenario so so if i show you this tweet rocky is ready for snow season. So the word Rocky is ambiguous here. We don't know whether Rocky is a human or whether Rocky is some animal. However, if we have a company image information, we can correctly label this identity as a, as a dog. So what we can say that multimodal information provide in, in enriched information to, to label any identity. So in this rock, uh, in this tweet, obviously Rocky is a is the name of the dog. So let me now show you the third application scenario involving different modalities. So in this um, uh, particular scenario, uh, uh, Phoenix can wear make makeup that actually make visual identification challenging. However, if we have a company speech information or voice information, we can actually identify accurately identify this famous actor into correct category using audio visual information. So all these three application scenarios are, uh, we have seen in a real world scenario. So it is therefore very important to build um, a system that can actually uh, process uh, multiple data from multiple modalities. 
so uh, and obviously different uh, communities are focusing on different areas of you can say multi model so it it has application ranging from psychology to robotics so in this particular talk or seminar we will focus on speech vision and language it it has also uh, application in robotics and obviously psychology so uh, regarding this speech and vision we also have various application and it include from classification to retrieval verification zero shot learning multi model name entity recognition and um, visual question answering and image captioning in today's talk we will focus on cross model matching verification and zero shot learning so uh, during my phd and po postdoc for multi model application i focus on two fundamental challenge that typically uh, is very common in a, in a, any application one is obviously representation extracted from individual modalities either from text image or um, audio information so we need to have discriminative embedding from these modalities in order to learn a uh, discriminative joint embedding so we we should learn a joint discriminative embedding so we can perform tasks like retrieval or verification so the learned embedding with the using multiple information should be discriminative enough so that we can apply in various applications so now i will show you the work that includes multiple modalities and it focuses on audio and image information so as i told you the application scenario that we consider is face wise association so let me first explain what is face wise association so an association between face and voice of a celebrity is successfully established in a cross model biometric task so for example cross model matching where the goal is to match the the either face or voice of a modality with the objects available in the gallery in this particular application we have one to two matching similarly cross model verification where the goal is to verify voice and the face of a celebrity so however previous work does not explore the effect of multiple lang uh, languages on face voice association so we want to analyze if this face voice association can be established using multiple languages or not so one of the uh, you can say um, standard benchmark data set used is uh, voxlab data set so it is an audio visual data set consisting of short clips of human speech extracted from interviews interview videos uploaded to youtube and there are around 2 1251 speaker in this data set and it's like you can say a, a, a balanced data set consisting of almost same number of male and female identities so and they established two evaluation protocol one is called unseen and unheard and other one is called seen and heard so in unseen and unheard evaluation protocol the entities are identities are disjoint it means during the training the network has not heard and seen those identities and seen and heard evaluation protocol is some of the samples or videos are heard and seen by the network please note that in seen and heard configuration the 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 videos are different so when we are uh, evaluating the network we we don't use the same video samples so however voxlab data set does not sorry mm, uh, does not provide language annotation so we cannot actually utilize this uh, uh, data set to to um, to test um, multiple language uh, impact on face voice association so we build another data set we call it multilingual audio visual data set so 
so it's very similar to to walk slab however it does provide language annotation and we collected two versions of this data set so first we collected identities speaking english and uh, urdu and the another version with identities or celebrities speaking hindi and english so here you can see in this particular example there are four identities and you can see how challenging are the face images so these are taken from different interviews uploaded on the youtube and it's extremely challenging data set so with this language annotation uh, we can actually analyze the impact of multiple languages on face wise association so we we build a two stream architecture to 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 learn a joint embedding for face wise association so we in the first stage we extracted face and voice embedding using uh, off the shelf uh, state of the art uh, networks like vgg face or for vgg vox lab uh, data to to extract the, the 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 information from either face and audio information then we use two layer shallow architecture to bridge the gap between face and voice embedding so the loss function that we use is actually minimize the distance between positive face and voice embedding while maximizing the dissimilar or negative face and voice embeddings so we 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 tested our approach on on standard face voice association task on using cross model verification task and we employed standard equal error rate to evaluate the the performance of the 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 network and you can see from the from the table that our our proposed two branch network perform comparative to to the state of the art however is still lower than the dim net uh, work however so considering these uh, results we can actually employ it to to analyze the impact of multiple languages so before we do this task we actually build evaluation protocol in order to to evaluate the this face wise association on multiple languages so previously i introduced unseen and unheard evaluation protocol so in in this um, protocol the network is evaluated on unseen unheard configuration from the same language heard during the training along with a completely unheard language at the test time so it's even more challenging than the previous evaluation protocol because we are evaluating the network on a completely unheard language so for example during the training if we train the network with english sample we are testing the same celebrities using the same english language and a completely unheard language which is urdu in this particular case so we we um, uh, use the same evaluation protocols to to test on cross cross model verification task where the goal is to to ad identify if voice and the face of a celebrity is same or not same so we observe that there is a performance drop when Uh, we are evaluating on a completely unheard language so to our surprise is still better than random verification considering the challenging nature of the evaluation pr protocol this is a, a very very surprising result to to us though there is obviously a performance drop and we observe that this performance drop is due to the very common phenomena known as domain gap similarly we because we have uh, audio segments as well so we we uh, evaluate if um, if to we evaluate the network to analyze the impact of multiple language on speaker recognition task including identification and verification so similarly at the test time the network is evaluated on the same language heard during the training along with completely unheard language of the same identities 
so we we tested on identification tasks and we noticed that yes there is a performance drop uh, but still it's better than random uh, classification or identification far better than uh, uh, random classification so so we can safely say that uh, the uh, that there are certain language characteristic that is shared across multiple languages by 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 a certain speaker so similarly, a, a same uh, performance drop is observed when uh, we we are uh, testing it on a ve speaker verification task, uh, but still better than uh, random verification. So so this uh, with this work we we analyze the impact of multiple languages on face wise association. We build a new data set and show that that. Um, that face wise association is not language independent task it's it's depend on the on the language speaking or uh, spoken by by a particular celebrity so another work that i want to show is deep latent space learning for cross model mapping for audio and visual si signal and this is one and this is one of our earlier work which we actually built to 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 improve the results uh, shared by um, uh, by one of the earlier work by face wise association community so so we built a single stream architecture to extract the representation from face and uh, you can say audio information with the with the single network so previously there are as i already showed you that typically two branches are applied one for face and other one for um, for voice and then you use a shallow architecture to bridge the gap however we we observe that if we can encode the voice embedding into into a representation that typically used by a, by a visual network then we can use a same architecture or network to extract the representation from the network so so the framework is based on a single stream network and we propose a novel loss function to embed both audio and visual information in the in the latent space i will talk about this loss function in a in a second so so this is a unique architecture in a sense that we use a single stream architecture uh, uh, architecture which actually extract information from both modalities and it does not require carefully crafted pairs or triplets which are very common when we are building a contrastive uh, loss function or triplet loss function so let me show you this particular um, loss function so it simultaneously learns the center of all classes and minimize the distance between each center and associated sample from both modalities so by doing so it can learn compact representation of both modalities for a particular class or identity so so similar voices and faces will be projected very close to each other and dissimilar faces and voices are projected away from each other and it is jointly trained with a softmax loss function so we evaluated this uh, result both on seen and unheard configuration and uh, uh, and obviously we use very standard uh, verification uh, matrices including uh, equal error rate and area under the curve and you can see that in both cases uh, this learnable uh, that are proposed uh, single strain network outperformed the the earlier uh, work that actually introduce face wise association tasks to the vision vision community so we also analyze the impact of demographic on face wise association by varying gender nationality age and their combination so for example when we are constructing pairs for cross model verification tasks we actually have gender nationality age so for example when i'm constructing a a pair to to evaluate my network uh, for example when i say gender it means the two pair or the face or voice are taken from the same gender either from female or uh, female uh, male 
and similarly for nationality, age, and their combination. And you can see when we start imposing these constraints uh, on the uh, uh, on the pair, you can see the performance drops from ninety one point two percent to to eighty one percent, considering what sort of um, demographic criteria we apply. And and again, our network outperformed the. In some cases, our network actually outperformed the 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 earlier work or state of the art work. So we also evaluate our our network on uh, cross model matching tasks, where actually we use accuracy score to to measure this matching task, and we actually vary the number of images in the gallery from two, four, six. Uh, up to 10 and you can see when we start varying the number of uh, images in the gallery it's an extremely challenging task so so you can say when there are only 10 images so it means nine are negative and only one is positive so the performance goes up to to from 82% to 30% so so it's an extremely challenging task so one of the the most recent work is fusion and orthogonal projection loss for improved phase wise uh, association tasks so we we know that that uh, typically most uh, method tackle phase wise association by learning a discriminative embedding space so so instance from face and voices are aligned and instance of semantically similar identities are nearby so all these existing loss function learn Mm, are discriminative embedding by learning by minimizing the distance between similar uh, samples so uh, we can actually categorize those loss function into two categories one which uses metric based loss function either contrastive or triplet the other one is with the joint supervision with the soft mesh either center loss or git loss so so we propose uh, a new architecture with uh, with two branches which generate face and voice embeddings and obviously we also propose a gated multimodal fusion which works on the joint embedding of face and voice by by minimizing the distance uh, between positive faces and while maximizes between dissimilar faces and voices our one fundamental difference is because center loss actually minimizes the distance in euclidean distance in euclidean domain while uh, softmax actually works in the angular domain so they are a little uninnovative and and does not uh, you can say complement each other very nicely. However, orthogonal projection loss uh, and softmax complement each other because both work in the in the angular domain, and we have better representation, jo better joint representation in the in the Latin space. So we we evaluated our uh, method again on on um, on. Uh, uh, with various loss functions that are available in the literature uh, and we 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 use uh, complexity and obviously quantitative numbers in order to say which of those loss function is better and again we we also use this compare this with uh, with the with the existing loss function and you can see in all cases are are proposed uh, two stream network with orthogonal projection loss outperform both in terms of quantitative numbers as well as complexity. So this is an extremely important or result for us because uh, so far, um, unfortunately, existing work does not provide a, a, a fair comparison among different methods. So in this particular work, we uh, let me go back. So we kept uh, face wise features same network same and only varied the loss function so we can have a fair comparison among existing loss functions available in the literature for face wise association tasks so so and we we obviously you can see that our loss function outperform all the the existing face wise loss functions available in the uh, in the literature and we have better um, uh, empirical and theoretical complexity performance for for our for our uh, uh, 
loss function. So now finally, I, I showed you a number of works that uh, I have done involving audio and visual information. Now let me introduce, uh, uh, you can say text and visual information. So for this particular uh, uh, modalities, I considered uh, zero shot learning uh, task. So uh, we know that uh, existing, uh, uh, you can say, uh, audio uh, existing image and text network actually start from unimodal uni model of the shelf component, then they have a, um, you can say shallow architecture, and then they have this loss function, which actually minimizes the distance between positive pairs and while maximizing the distance between. So for example, this is a fundamental, you can say, uh, architecture when we are, we are learning cross model retrieval task. So and once we have this uh, joint embedding, we can see that uh, similar uh, image and text embeddings are projected very close to each other in the embedding space. You can see different, uh, um, uh, you can say clusters in the, in the embedding space, which represent similar concepts. So, so our motivation for this is instead of starting from of the shelf component, we actually want to start for joint embedding for, for a zero shot learning. The goal is to actually learn, uh, learn from such an embedding, which actually have, have uh, learned joint representation of both modalities. So it actually, uh, you can say relaxes the multimodal representation task for zero shot learning. So, so our goal in this particular, we use a proxy task to, to minimize the distance between the, the two modalities. And then we extracted the, instead of starting from uh, audio and visual information, we are starting from this joint embedding and then performing a downstream task, which is a zero shot learning task. And obviously with this uh, joint representation, it, it, it is, it is uh, an improved representation. So we, we are expecting that this definitely be a game changer for, for zero short learning task. So we, mm, we use a very standard uh, two branch network to, to minimize the distance between the, the similar uh, image and text information while maximizing the distance between uh, negative, you can say, uh, image and text description. Once we learned this uh, task, we extracted the representation from this two stream network and then fed to any zero shot state of the art uh, uh, zero shot learning method. So we selected three zero shot learning method. And because we, we believe that this two branch network should be trained on large scale visual and textual information. So we use three data set, Flickr 30K, a conceptual caption and MS Coco. So one of the first thing that we want to, to uh, you do is we want to, to do ablation study in order to see which components of the network are, are important in for, for our, this, for our network. So, so we, as I, told you that we selected three uh, zero shot learning uh, methods, uh, CDL, uh, TF Wigan and CS Wigan. So these are state of the art method for zero shot learning method. And we selected three um, uh, large scale data set to train our two branch network. And and the, the, the you can say the standard uh, visual embedding that are typically used in, in zero short learning is 2048. So we train this two branch network with various embedding sizes and extracted those embeddings and fed to, to a zero short learning method to see how well our uh, representation and doing are doing. So as you can see that in all cases are uh, the joint embedding uh, extracted from a two branch network outperform the standard uh, image representation that are typically apply employed for a zero shot learning task. 
so we also uh, evaluated our our um, proposed method with a fine grained classification task with with the two uh, data set one is cub and other one is flower data set so you can see for this particular task our network uh, pr produces far better than than the 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 original baseline uh, image representation so we can clearly see that we can clearly notice that the representation pr produced by the joint embedding are far better are far better than the um, uh, far better than the individual representation so uh, so you can say we we moved from uh, independent unimodal model to joint representation which is typically referred to as pre-trained and transfer learning approach uh, which started with the wilbert model so we also uh, compare our results with the with the with the state of the art zero shot learning and you can see that the 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 best results are highlighted with the with the uh, blue color and you can say this is our representation and in most cases our network actually outperform the state of the art result so previous results are far more important because they are evaluated using uh, you, you can say they have more fair comparison than the st state of the art the, we we included these result to just to see how well our network is doing um, comparing to the state of the art network so obviously this these works uh, cannot be possible without um, effective collaboration so uh, i i i want to thank all my collaborator for for helping me to improve my work so now i'd be very happy to answer your question thank you so much